Okay, I just spent about 10 minutes making a video that I hadn't pushed the record button. I'm going to try to video some sewing. I'm only going to do this on this one, one time in this series. The rest of making the harness, I'll just show you the parts and, and uh, not show you the sewing them together because it'll always be the same and get pretty boring. Um, whenever I join two pieces, I use one of those. It's the same kind of a of a seam that you'll see on a you know a store. You know, if you go to the store and buy a halter or anything like that for a horse, you'll see it's all sewn together with those X's. So I just do it because that's how the big dogs do it. Um, mine have a double line at one side because I start at one start somewhere and I sew around and then I go diagonal across diagonal back so this why well, get these double lines the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to sew a line down the middle here just a straight line and that's going to be to uh that's not this is to hold the strap in place to make it do its job so that it'll work this down here won't be for holding it together it'll be this is going to be a loop it curves up like that. I've got the spot marked. Another one of those boxes will sew right there. This will be inside it, and I don't want these two straps to separate and have something get stuck between them. So this single seam down the middle here is just to hold them together. It will look like this when it's finished. I sew the box, the straight seam, and then I saw all the way around the, the cut because where I've cut that I've weakened it. And so that's to, to give it back at least some of its strength. And where I cut them, I always, uh, I heal them with a hot iron. I work in plastic. I hate plastic. And I complain about it all the time and I think leather's way better. But I'm uh, my hands aren't good enough anymore to push the all through leather. I mean, I can you know I can sew an inch or two, but I can't do this kind of work. I've got a machine that'll sew leather, but it won't sew with this strong a thread. So I do all my sewing with one of these awls. Uh, there's a variety of different ones. Some of them have the spool up in the handle, but they, they all work on the same principle. There's a needle with a hole in it. Thread comes out the other side. And what you do is you've got, you pull a bunch through and you've got it on one side and you've got this on the other side and you make a lock stitch. Um, and or like a machine stitch. Like I said, I use this because I can get this bigger thread. I, I want the strong thread and it's a waxed thread. I buy it on big rolls. But it won't last a long time. Anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sew this down. First thing you do is you pull out a big long stretch. And that's about you know, a cubit, just like the, the length of my forearm. And uh, that's probably a little too long. I think a fold a little back. You, you pull out, no matter how long your seam's gonna be, you can't pull out any more than you can work with manually because you have to manipulate this thread all the time while you're sewing. You're manipulating the needle in the thread. And so if it's gonna be a longer seam than that, you just tie off and, and do it again. And it's a guesstimate, and the longer you guess, the closer you'll get at it, and you'll never get perfect, or if you do, you're better than me. Um, stick the needle through, hand shaking. This is what I can't do anymore with leather. Leather's much stronger. This stuff has holes in it, and basically the 
the point finds the space between the threads. You pull it back. Let me see if I can see that. Yeah, with my finger behind it. See this loop right here? My finger behind it, there's a loop that it'd be to our left. We're going to grab that and pull that right through. That is our other piece of yarn or thread. Okay, that's our first stitch. We're going to go over a little ways, whatever we think is the stitch length. The shorter your stitches are, the more thread it takes, the stronger your connection is. You pull it back. Should have worn a white shirt. You pull it back so that it makes that loop. When you first put it through, the, the thread is tied on both sides of the needle. And you pull the needle back and it makes a loop on one side. And then you go down your thread to where the end of your thread is. And you just poke it through that loop. Pull it back. Now what you want to do here is you want to get your tension so that the place where the thread crosses over like this is inside the material. You don't want it out on either side. And that's trickier than it looks to get it right. Uh, it's something that is part of the of the kind of you know craft work satisfaction of it. And then you just keep doing that over and over. I kind of eyeball a spot in the webbing where there's already a natural hole in the in the weave, you know, and uh, to make it easier to get it to poke through. This is where a normal person making a normal video speeds it up and it goes zip and he's all done and you saw that. But I, I'm not going to do that because, you know, if you're going to make your own harness, you might as well have some idea how long it's going to take you. So. I'm not going to show you a whole lot of seams, but I'm going to show you this one. Chica's over there on the other chair. If I had a better tripod here, I'd turn the camera and let you see it. She's over on the other chair because she doesn't like me doing all this crap. Chica, come here, baby. Come on. Come on over here. Yeah, there's my girl. There's my sweetheart. That's my Chica. That's my She's in this bed. Yeah, she's good. You sit right there, honey. We're just working. The reason I get by without people is because I got so many animals. I wish I had a few more, really, you know, people I could really get along with. But. At least I got all these other furry people. What you doing, brother? I talk to all of them the same, you know, if you, <laughs> you listen to me. Talk to the donkeys. You know, I talk to her and them just the same. Yes. Are you Randy? I took the took Missy out today on a on a long ride, longest ride we've ever been on. We went down that way to the to the uh, creek bottom and and uh, then rode. I was I was riding. I was on. The, we were in the in the what's called an easy entry cart. It's I call it the road cart. It's got you know motorcycle wheels and and. Uh, springs for the seat 
I've got a monopod mounted on it to mount my camera on so I get these videos that look not unlike what the world looks like after you've eaten LSD only not quite exactly the same but it's 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 pretty jiggly and uh, you see that this line has bent a little it's not as straight as it could be um, that's because I decided I had it too far off. It started not centered well enough, so I've moved it over a little bit to get it better centered. And that actually doesn't matter at all. Um, I just, uh, you know, if I set myself some standard of, of workmanship, then I can, it makes it easier to, to do the best work I can. You got to have enough thread, string, whatever that stuff is left when you get to the end to tie a knot because I tie it off. I use surgeon's knots and uh, sometimes I just use simple reef knots or square knots. Um, the wax thread makes the knots. Uh, really heal up and get it, it's good stuff it holds a knot you know you, you tie a knot in this stuff and it stays tied and uh, I haven't calculated the cost between this and buying harness you can buy good harness uh, for donkey sized animal for I think five to seven hundred dollars and you can buy a tolerable harness you know for 150 and uh, I don't make as good a harness as the five to seven hundred dollar harness I don't know how it compares to the tolerable harness that costs 150 and I don't really know what it costs me to make it I haven't kept a, a running calculation but it's not free, you know, because there's a lot of, uh, the webbing's not too expensive. I, you know, I buy the webbing online. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the thread is, I don't know, you know, you, you buy a $5, $7, $8, I don't know where I've hidden the bag now, so I can't show it to you. But you buy one, it's a, it's a roll about, about that long and about that big around you know and you buy uh, one of those of this of this yarn or this this thread and you can do a lot of sewing I've been working on this this spool I'm finishing up now for a couple three years and uh, I make a fair amount of stuff you know with this all so I've made a whole harness for Abe and a whole harness for Missy and I, I was kind of making Abe's up as I went along. I used to work a team of draft horses, and I bought them from the Amish. I bought uh, the harness that they'd been wearing at the same sale. You know, they didn't even change harness. I even had to write one for the right animal. And uh, so I knew how, from from that, I knew how harness worked, and I and. There's a guy named Lynn Miller who knows an incredible amount about uh, animal power and especially draft horse power. And uh, he's written a bunch of books and he's written one called the Workhorse Handbook that I don't, if if you want to work an animal, I, I, if you want to work a donkey, you still can't go wrong with the Workhorse Handbook because all, without exception, all the principles are exactly the same. It's just a smaller scale. And... Uh, you, you, you read anything Lynn Miller has ever written, and I guarantee that it will be to your advantage if you're trying to learn to do this. And uh, so he, he published a, a magazine called The Small Farmer's Journal and, uh, and has written all these books, and it's just a, a huge amount of valuable information. So, so I knew kind of what I was going to do, but it had been a long time, been a lot of years since I sold the Belgians. That's another story. 
kind of got sad, but anyway, um, I was partly doing this by memory and, and partly doing it by, I've watched a lot of videos of people in the, what I refer to as the energy efficient world, what some people call the third world where they use animals on purpose because they're so practical. Um, but uh, I've watched a lot of videos of them and pay close attention to their equipment, their rigs, and because these are people who are really serious about getting work done with animals. I mean, they're, they're nice to their animals. So, you know, their animals are, are obviously well cared for, most of them, and, and obviously in good uh, spirits, most of them. But uh, those people are good at this. And, I mean, their animals work just absolutely cheerfully, competently, uh, I don't know how well you can still see what I'm doing. I'm just telling stories and so on. Okay, I've got down here to the to the uh, the slit. I'm gonna go across the slit. I'm just about out. You got to keep enough. You got to save enough to tie a knot with. And at, at first, yeah, you know, in a way, it feels kind of wasteful because you just have to cut off. And waste all, all these two and three inch ends, uh, and up to four or five even. But it's just how it has to be, and it's still a good system. And and it's still in terms of the amount of resource it wastes, it doesn't waste a lot. Now you see on this backside, there's uh, the cuts right there. I've jumped the slot over here. It was over there, you know, so I'm on the other side. So I'm sewing the cut shut with this with this stitch, and this is going to be my knot stitch. So I'm going to poke a thread through like I have been, but instead of pulling it up snug, I'm going to hold it in my fingers, and I'm going to feed that, make that feed back through. Okay, so now I got all of the all the thread back on this side. Where have I hidden my scissors? Okay. Now I got I got a hand span's worth right there. And I'm gonna get about another one right here. Maybe a little less. Okay. Where I put my cork. Well, hey, I always keep that thing stuck in the cork. That way, if I go to sleep and get back up on it, Chica, are you always sleeping on my cork? She says, I don't know. Okay, basic square knot, except I go around twice. There's one, two, Same thing going the other direction. One, two. I leave about an eighth of an inch, three millimeters of tail. And that tail will just turn into fuzz over the course of about a year, six months. And then if I don't lose them down into my chair, which I appear to have just done, I usually tie the pair of them together, drop them in a wastebasket. So that's how you sew something with one of those awls. And uh, and that's about how long it takes if you, you know, work like I do for that many inches of, of seam. But it's like, you know, I didn't have anything else that was asking for that time. You know, you got to do something with your life, and that's what I do with mine. So thanks for coming along. This will all be one big playlist. I'm going to make this whole harness on video. So uh, this will all be one big playlist. I hope that someone someplace learns something from it. Thank you very much.